Hello and welcome to this video to tell you everything that you need to know about your Miko Deluxe humidifier. This is an ultrasonic humidifier. Um, so the things that I'll be running through on this video will be in common with other ultrasonic humidifiers. What I've got here laid out on the desk is all the component parts that you're going to get when you open the box when you receive one of these Miko humidifiers. Uh, what I've got here in front of me is not a new one, it's one that we use here for testing in the office. I thought that would be more useful to show you because it will give you an idea of what the humidifier is actually going to look like after a few months worth of use because particularly if you're in a high mineral content area or a hard water area the humidifier is going to show signs of that level of mineral or lime scale passing through it and here in Guildford we're in a very hard water area so this will give you an indication of what it's going to look like. Um, soft water areas you'll be a lot better off and the whole thing will be a lot easier for you. So here's the base of the humidifier. First thing that you need to do is turn the machine over and we're going to put in the air filter. So I'm just flicking off that cover there. You get a proper HEPA filter, charcoal filter uh, within the unit. That's great because it means the humidified air that you're going to be breathing in has been purified and cleaned as well. Really important and it's a similar feature on the water as well. The HEPA filter will remove particles from the air smaller than we can see with a human eye. The charcoal side of it, that's what removes smells from the air. So you're going to get that air cleaning as well. So pop the filter in, always pop it in with the HEPA side facing out. Um, any type of combined filter like this on any type of machine, it's always HEPA first. Pop the cover back on. Okay, so that's that bit done. You've then got little feet that come in the bag with the instruction manual. Just pop them in and give them a turn in order to hold them in place. This lifts the humidifier up off the surface that you've got it on and that helps the airflow to get in and also stops any water from leaking out underneath um, through this gap if you haven't put them on. There's a little washer here on the feet that helps to give it a complete seal. So that's now the underside uh, dealt with. We've got our feet, we've got our HEPA and charcoal filter installed. On the rear of the machine, you'll see there's a little aroma tray. So if you wish to put a fragrance in there uh, to go with your humidification, you can do, and that's how you access it. This is then where the action happens and the humidification happens. What you've got in here is the circle by here, that's your ultrasonic pad. What that does is it just vibrates really, really fast to chop the water up into tiny, tiny little particles and you'll see the mist coming out once we turn the machine on. Here is our PTC heater. That's what warms the water up if we're doing warm mist. And you can see ours is covered in a good layer of lime scale. I'm going to do a cleaning video separately so that you'll get a feel of how you deal with this and how you deal with um, the lime scale. This is our ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light is brilliant because what it does is it sterilizes the water before it gets humidified. That's great because you're going to be breathing in this uh, humidified air. So you know it's been cleaned by the HEPA filter and the charcoal filter and the water itself has gone through the UV sterilization as well. You know that the UV sterilization is working by the yellow discoloration that you've got going on on the plastic. Now, there's nothing that we can do about that to stop it and actually it's quite reassuring that you can see it going on um, because that means that the ultraviolet itself is working. Finally this is um, the fan outlet uh, or the air outlet where the uh, air is being blown through um, which will come out of the top of the unit. Oh this one by here that's water level indicator uh, just so we, for completeness. So we've got our tank this is our five litre tank uh, which holds the water. So undo the cap on that. First things first, you'll read in the instruction manual that this water filter, um, which is there to protect you as best it can against that lime scale on the hard water, um, needs to be pre-soaked in a salt solution for 24 hours in order to give it 100% activation. So follow the instructions in the manual and do that first and then Fix that onto the cap like so, 
so that that's there. Even if you're in a soft water area, I would still recommend using this because there might be mineral content uh, within the water that um, you prefer to remove and this will help um, to remove some of that mineral content as well. So it's worth using even if you're not in a hard water area. Next, get some water inside the tank. Obviously you can take this to a tap and uh, fill it up that way round or you can bring the water to it. But the water goes in this end. It takes five litres, but there's enough to get us going for this video. Pop your cap on. Okay, you've got a water level indicator here, which marries up with what we got on the other side of the base. Turn this over and bring the two halves together. You know you're doing it the right way around because it's got Miko and obviously the control panel there. So that tells you you're going the right way around. Hopefully you can see that on the video. You've got a handle. So if you do want to carry this tank and take it through to uh, um, where the tap is, that makes it a little bit easier. Also living in the top here, is a little brush that comes with it just for cleaning the ultrasonic pad uh, in the base. And then to finish things off, uh, we've got the lid, which matches the feet. Now you see on the top of the lid, and once I turn it on, you'll get a better feel for this, uh, we've got directional nozzles. It's really, really useful to have this. Um, if you've got a humidifier that only goes in the one direction, then you're gonna get a lot more problems with condensation and puddles of water appearing um, on the surface that you're humidifying it off. But just by having this and being able to divide the mist left and right, you get a much, much, much better humidification for the room and you get less problems with um, puddles of water or um, any condensation occurring, which is a problem for all ultrasonic um, humidifiers when they're being used in an environment where there's a temperature difference. Finally, on the back, on the mains lead, um, is the humidity sensor. That's what's measuring what the room humidity is. And we keep it away from the controls so it doesn't um, suffer from any overheating, which will give it the wrong reading if it was too close to the PCB. And it's at the rear of the machine because you're going to be humidifying forward so the mist itself won't land on it. Right, let's just plug it in because when we're messing around and setting things up and putting water in, it's always good to have your electronic devices unplugged. Okay, there's a bleep just to tell us that it's turned on. So press the on button. And it tells me that there's not enough water in there. So obviously my jug um, wasn't full enough. Um, so we'll pause the video and we'll go again. So when you filled your tank up with water and you place it the right way up on the base, you're going to hear a sort of glug, glug, glugging sound. That's because um, this bottom half is now full of water as well. So if you're thinking about at this point picking up the unit and moving it, I would recommend you don't because if you pick it up as it is like this, you're going to spill some water. If you do have to pick it up and move it, then move it in two parts. Um, so use the handle to lift this section up and off. And you can see the bottom is full of water. Then move this section separately as well. So a little bit of caution because you have now got a unit that's full of water. Right, anyway, we can turn the unit on. So press the on button, which is just in the middle. You hear a bleep. Mist starts to come out of the top of the machine and you have room temperature and humidity readings that automatically apply. So you can see what I mean about uh, directing the mist in uh, two different directions for more even humidification. If you bring them together, as you would get on most humidifiers that only have got um, the one nozzle for the air to come out, then all of that mist is just going in the one direction and it's just gonna be falling and that's why you get puddles appearing on work surfaces and furniture. So by separating it, you're able to get a more even humidification and 
you're not going to end up or you're less likely to end up with condensation appearing in one place. One of the ways that we say to get a more even humidification throughout the room is actually to buy one of our fans and to use this in conjunction with a fan and allow the fan to move the humidified air around the room um, so it doesn't settle into one particular area of the room. The humidity would naturally sort itself out anyway, but it's far more efficient if you take a humidifier and a fan and put the two of them together. So in terms of the controls themselves, well, our preferred option um, for the machine is to use the auto mode, which is this one just by here, second one along. Now, if you use the auto mode, that's just going to set the humidification so that it maintains a humidity of between 50 and 60 percent. It will adjust the mist levels itself automatically and it will stop you from over humidifying. Over humidifying is a real danger with any humidifier so you don't want to give yourself a humidity of up around 70 percent because at 68 percent mold can grow and you don't want that to happen. So by capping it at 60%, that's a good healthy humidity to have within the air, somewhere between 50 and 60%. And auto mode ensures that you are always achieving that, but you don't overachieve. Now you also have the option with the machine, if you wish, to come out of auto mode and choose your own target humidity, wherever you may want it to be. So by pressing the water droplet button, it will just scroll through and you can choose your own target humidity. So if you prefer it to be slightly on the drier side, <coughs> excuse me, you can do that. Now what you're going to notice here is that the machine's showing 70% humidity. I've had it on auto mode, then I've had it set to um, a target of 50%, but it's still running. That's basically because the machine's going to run for about five minutes after turning on regardless of what the humidity is. This allows it to get some air through the machine so it can get a better feel for what the room humidity is. If it didn't do that, then you're most likely just going to end up with false readings all of the time. So the different options as you go along with this machine. So first of all, we have our UV and the little symbol comes up there. That's turned on the lamp that is now sterilizing the water. So I recommend that you have that on all of the time. If I hold this button down for three seconds, that's gonna turn on the ionizer for me. The ionizer will help to purify the air, particularly with regards to dust particles in the immediate vicinity of the humidifier. Lots of people buy this for use in the bedrooms. Um, helps um, young children who maybe have got a cold uh, to get settled at night, it helps them to breathe more easily, helps adults with colds as well. Lots of people swear by humidifiers to help with snoring, um, but whether you like a light or you don't like a light within your bedroom at night, that's very personal. So if I take the, half, the crescent moon option here, which is also um, the ultraviolet option, hold that down for three seconds, then you can see that the display turns off. So if you're someone that doesn't like any light within the bedroom at night uh, when you've got a machine on, then holding that down for three seconds will turn the display off and also it will just keep the machine working in its low noise uh, output as well. If I press any button, then the uh, display comes back on so I can see now what the uh, relative humidity is. You can see the machine's actually finished checking the air. I'm filming this on a really humid summer's day. Um, and in order to keep uh, the background noise down, I've had to close all the windows. So the room itself is actually quite humid anyway, which is why we're getting readings up in 70%. The machine sampled the air for long enough, it spotted that, and that's why the mist has turned itself off. There's a timer off function, uh, which you can use. So if you only want the machine to run for say four hours, then press the timer, two, three, four. The H has appeared on the display. It tells me the four hours. The H stays on the display, so I know that I've got the timer set. So this machine will now just run for four hours, then it will turn itself off. 
at any time I can press the button and it tells me how long I've got to go on that countdown. So if I press that in an hour's time, it would be three that would be flashing up. The humidistat button we've done already, allowing us to set our target humidity. And then we've got our mist output. So how much mist is actually being humidified at any one time. We've got a choice on that of settings one, two, and three. In auto mode, you can't set that, but uh, outside in humidistat mode, uh, you can set one, two, or three. And then we got warm mist, which is a little symbol up there. So warm mist turns on the PTC heater that you saw at the start of the video, and that preheats the water. Now, the advantage of that is it increases humidification. Um, you're also going to find um, when you do a bit of research on the medical benefits of having a humidifier that some doctors and some experts do recommend the warm mist mode in order um, to help with some particular respiratory illnesses. But basically warm mist increases the humidification so you're getting more humidity out of it. If I change the humidistat setting, so I take it right up high to 80%, um, that will then turn the humidification back on. Once it's actually humidifying, you can see that my mist level is set to one at the moment. Um, if I want to increase that, um, press the button, it goes up to two, and I'll get more mist coming out, and up to three, and again, more mist again. I'm going to set it down to one so that I'm not disappearing in this video in a cloud of mist. But in terms of whether I've got this on warm mist or cool mist, when I put my hands through it, you don't actually notice a huge amount of difference. It's very child safe. Um, you're not going to burn yourself. This, when we talk about a warm mist, we're not talking about a kettle or steam or anything like that. You don't really notice a huge amount of difference here at the output part. The difference is in the base. Um, if you were to put your hand in the water when you got warm mist on, um, you would feel that the water is warmer. I don't recommend that you do anything with regards to the base whilst it's still plugged in. Always when you're dealing with water and electricity, unplug the device before you start um, touching things in the base. So you can see what the mist looks like you can see how it comes out um, and you can see the usefulness of the nozzles in order to separate the mist out so it's not all going in the one direction. I hope you found that video useful. That's taking you through all of the basics. If you've got any comments, please leave it in the notes below and we'll try and answer every single one and clarify anything that we might have missed. Look out for separate videos that we'll do on cleaning and also with slightly more in-depth technical details about how to get the best out of your humidifier and what the ultrasonic performance actually delivers. But for now, I hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.